We start the session. We're already a little bit behind schedule. So this is going to be really, I think, a, a terrific session. Uh, I was uh, attending a conference, as uh, Marcus Grant mentioned earlier, uh, uh, last two, two, two weeks ago, on game changers. How, the, how we're supposed to change the game in order to actually be more effective. And here we have three cities that uh, have been doing this uh, consistently, and so we'll, we will see what uh, uh, they are going to tell us. But before then, uh, that I have to sort of introduce um, this uh, panel, and uh, essentially the, the program will, be, will, go as, will run as follows. So first I will speak for a quarter of an hour. Then uh, I, with each of the three cities will get half an hour, <laughs> and then we will have a quarter of an hour session. But of course, if you have a very, very sharp and urgent point to raise, please do so, because that might stimulate and make it very, very lively. I'm not going to have any uh, uh, exercises, uh, uh, as uh, Marcus Grant has, but I do have, uh, I did bring some puzzles. I did want uh, to bring a puzzle to address. So, uh, so these are two. Uh, these are two, just two symmetric uh, bricks, and you have to build a pyramid for that. So, if you sort of get this, get I wouldn't say bored because it's going to be a very exciting session. But if you want to try your. Uh, um, I can't say luck, your skills at this. And then I want to have also a volunteer wearing a jacket, please, just because it's a playful city. Can, can I have the, yeah, you, I think you are responsible for, I think you are responsible for this meeting. So let me, I think you are responsible for this meeting. So please stand, stand up. And you, you have essentially to take Nothing. it. No, 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 no. You have, you have to take it out. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. No. <laughs> during, during the talk. So. Okay. So this is just to tell you what it means to change uh, the game. But uh, first, uh, now let's go to more serious uh, things. So I am the mayor. I have been mayor for the past eight years. Mayors in Italy are elected by the people. They stay in office for five years and can be re-elected only once. So I have 20 two months to go. <laughs> and uh, you, as you can see, it's actually quite tough. Before that, I was uh, a rector of the university, and I decided to, to run as a mayor precisely because I wanted to, to sort of run some kind of uh, epistemocracy, not technocracy, but I wanted to bring science at the foreground. But in fact, it is quite, quite uh, uh, difficult. And uh, I really would like to thank the organizers to congratulate again with Barcelona. I really would, would like to thank, to thank uh, uh, Consti Odriozola as uh, Aguirre, who, whom I met, uh, uh, and uh, that's not uh, irrelevant to this conference. I met her in Brussels uh, last December during the launch of the Covenant for Demographic Change. B and uh, uh, really what uh, the Covenant for Demographic Change is an example of uh, a kind of uh, uh, triple helix. We will hear more about that. It is uh, uh, an association that brings together local authorities, uh, for-profit, non-profit people from business. Uh, uh, of course, uh, it brings also uh, associations like the Association Age Platform, which represents something like 40 million uh, European citizens over 50. Uh, and 
what we try to do is uh, we try to uh, uh, define policies uh, for uh, enhancing the quality of life uh, of our elderly. Because, in fact, we are witnessing a, um, a, a demographic change. It has been mentioned, the, the issue of elderly people. But look, if you take just about any indicator and uh, you sort of uh, consider the next 50 years, or you consider a 50-year span in this last century, you will see that all age-related indicators will double in 50 years. In fact, there are three cities in the world that uh, by the year 2020 will have more than 25% more than 25 of their population aged over 65. One of them is already there, it's Japan, and the other two, uh, well, one is Italy. The old age index in my city is 216, meaning that every 100 under 14, we have 216 over 65. So uh, this is uh, quite, uh, uh, but of course, being a mathematician and, or and a statistician, I don't really look at just one indicator. I look at the time series and see what really happens. But the third country is another European country. Uh, country. I leave it to you as an exercise, which is the uh, country, I will say that at the very end. So. Uh, mm, I am the president of this uh, uh, covenant, and uh, let me see if I still have time. No, not really, we start with 10 minutes. So, uh, what I call middle out approach, it has been mentioned uh, before. The new paradigm shift in policy is really not the top down where the authority decides what to do. It's not the bottom up where just citizens uh, uh, are free to, to, to run around. It's really what used to be called in, in the 80s, when I used to work in artificial intelligence, the middle out approach in theory improving. So it, it has also other uh, words. It is called enabling, but uh, uh, the local authority is a facilitator. But really, there are other uh, words for denoting this. One of them, uh, of course, is intermediating or even social brokerage. You, you become social brokers, and this is the way to achieve the highest impact. Oh, by the way, my last question to the fantastic presentation of the uh, Barcelona uh, uh, people, when I asked about indicators, don't uh, uh, um, take me, um, don't misunderstand, please, this. I didn't want to have a proof of the impact. The impact indicator is just the last indicator. There are many more so called in intermediate process indicators that are very, very important. And essentially, um, next week I, w I will be in Brisbane where the Kobe. Uh, WHO Kobe uh, um, office uh, will have a very important conference on, uh, uh, in this case, it, it is uh, age friendliness indicators. But the general pattern is the following you have input indicators, then you have uh, output indicators. But that's just half of the story. Then you, you have outcome indicators, and only at the very end you have impact indicators. So you have all these process indicators that it is important to measure. And for instance, just to give you an example, the first input indicator is how much, for instance, political commitment you have. That is indeed a, an indicator to measure. And of course, it doesn't really make sense to say, well, does it have an impact or not? But still, it is very, very important. Uh, and now, so these are examples of uh, middle out uh, very successful initiatives I have done. This is on uh, contrasting cognitive uh, decline. Oh, by the way, here it's fantastic because here you, you are all multilingual. You know that uh, uh, very recent findings on Alzheimer and on dementia prove that multilingual communities are much more resilient. And the reason even people after stroke uh, are, are more, have a, a faster recovery. And you know why? Because in a multilingual context, uh, you are more trained uh, to compensate. And there have been really 
extraordinary uh, medical evidence. You know, they have taken groups of people with uh, having, uh, having the same cognitive capacities, and then they have scanned their brains with the three Tesla you know, machine in order to see uh, how the, 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 uh, the sort of the, the, let's call it the disease, the degeneration was progressing. And they found that the multilinguals had their brain, you know, all, all of them had the equal, so they were all dementia, but uh, they had sort of equal performance, and they found that the multilingual had their brain much more devastated by the disease than the monolingual. And so this is uh, actually the proof that multilingualism is, is, is actually very, very important to pursue. This is another example. Uh, um, uh, and, uh, it's called the No to the Solitude. Udine is a city, 100, 150,000 people. And this is, we have a lot of voluntary associations. And what we did here is just a call center. Call center for elderly people trying to match uh, needs to uh, suppliers. And uh, uh, so it's a typical example. This is a World Games Day. This I did in honor of, uh, of Utrecht. That is, uh, they told me, the center of the play, the game industry, gaming industry in Utrecht. You know, there is this very, very um, interesting example in WHO. I believe it's from somewhere in the Netherlands, so it could be Utrecht. But this was a very nice story at WHO. You know, the idea is to make the healthy way the easy way. So how to force people to use stairs. And there was this beautiful example where each step, actually, when you pressed it, uh, 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 produced a, a note. A piano. A piano. Yeah, this was in Utrecht. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. It was in the Netherlands. And so people just used the stairs because of this playful uh, trick. And this is a typical example. If we want to uh, teach healthy lifestyles, we have to make them the, f the easy way. We have to make them the fun way. It can't be, oh, no, stop, stop eating those things and rather eat uh, <laughs> boring stuff. No, you have to make it interesting. Uh, now, um, uh, this is the energy. I have signed in 2009 the Covenant of Mayors uh, to reduce uh, the um, I have four minutes to go to reduce the. Uh, <laughs> it's very difficult to to actually chair yourself. That's something which uh, uh, doesn't doesn't work. Uh, um, so uh, I signed the Covenant of Mayors to reduce CO2 emissions uh, from fossil fuels. So this is extremely interesting, even as an exercise, just to measure not the impact of your action, but just to measure how much CO2 you produce. And of course, you have to, to, to do uh, a lot of uh, promotion. And so we have an energy day where we try to promote uh, sustainable lifestyles. And since we have many waterways in our city, we have used uh, these uh, uh, turbines that are just uh, Archimedes inverted uh, uh, pump. Uh, this is the power, uh, of course, you have to promote mathematics. So the, here is the Pi Day, which is on the 14th of March, a little after 1,500 hours. It's a Pi Day. Uh, then this is another example called the Reader's Night. Uh, I think Buenos Aires is the city which has the highest uh, uh, concentration of, la of bookstores uh, per inhabitant. But Udine is among the first five. So I wonder your cities, how do they uh, place themselves? So this is an indicator. I don't know if it, you measure the impact or whatever, but this is a good indicator. Uh, Co-creation, the classical example in WHO of co-creation is, is uh, walk to school. You, 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 instead of having, uh, uh, you, you sort of uh, uh, help uh, children who want to uh, go to school, uh, not using the family's uh, private vehicle, but just walk. So you, this has many, many, many beneficial effects, uh, like uh, doing intergenerational activity. Oh, by the, by the way, this is also a very interesting thing that often people don't consider. Uh, we are living in, an, in, for the first time in history of mankind, we uh, live in a time when there are four, or even, where it is very common that there are four or five generations. Like a person who is 60 uh, has to deal with his grandchildren and also with his parents. Four layers. When, when uh, classrooms uh, from the primary school visit me at the town hall, I, I often enjoy asking them, so how many of you have a great-grandfather? 
and a few hands uh, are risen. But I say, no, no, I meant also a great grandmother. And then lots of hands, you know, rise because they, you know, they take my questions always very seriously. But uh, in the end, uh, you see, there are um, uh, okay. um, public-private par partnerships. So a, a very important thing in reducing uh, CO2 was to build a uh, um, um, district heating system with cogeneration. Because I don't know here in Spain, but in Italy, from the electricity from the mains has an efficiency of 35% from the primary energy source. It's not the case in Northern Europe, it's, it's, it's better, but this is because of other reasons. But uh, uh, so you see, cogeneration is very important and I, will, I could go on and on, but my time is uh, running out. So the last uh, uh, thing that I want to mention is how I brought uh, the broadband uh, 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 fiber in my city. I did that, uh, I, now it is, uh, all, all of it uh, is 900% uh, with 50 megabyte per second, and instead of uh, really digging new pipes, I used the street lighting pipes, and I made an agreement with the telephone company uh, allowing them to use, you know what, my sewage pipes. And this is really, I think, one of the most uh, innovative uh, 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 ideas, but of course you have to negotiate with the companies uh, to make sure that actually they are willing to uh, put their own cables uh, in, in your own uh, pipes. And so this I think it's quite an int intriguing combination because you have the most uh, prosaic thing which is the sewage and the most uh, fu futuristic uh, uh, infrastructure that is uh, uh, fi fiber, the, the fiber cable, uh, the optic uh, fiber. This is about it. Some ideas on uh, this uh, paradigm shift and uh, on how to um, actually uh, go about uh, in uh, changing the game. And now the first speaker is uh, uh, Sa Sandro Petruzzi from uh, Torino. Torino is a very, very important uh, city in Italy that uh, has about a million uh, uh, citizens uh, that is currently undergoing a huge uh, reorganization setting because they are building what is called a metropolitan area. And so we will, I think, hear from him how the issues of health and energy are addressed uh, in this huge governance change that is uh, the uh, making of a, um, uh, of a metropolitan. Uh,